Okay, we're putting our soffits in and uh, we're just using the cut off pieces from our 10 foot studs uh, for our drop part uh, to ration our hat channel. We got to make sure we clear everything. Notice we're clearing our data and our smurf tube and all the pipes and everything. Okay, and reason for this chalk line is we got this to our L metal at the top on the floor. See how I put it on the dot down there? It shines and hits our shiny 90 L metal at the top. Now, in order for me to make sure this is level, straight down, I put it back on the same chalk line. And hit the edge of my L metal. Make sure that's so that base, see how it shines here and kind of on the top one at the same time. Here and up there. It means it's level. Alright, these high dollar builders got their post in an inch out of plumb. So you can see down here, we got a hat track we're going now. They will notch around this in a little bit, but now I got to start cutting them because we're getting real close to the. This is our theater room. So I can go ahead and we want it soundproof more, anyways. So we're just putting hat track on to uh, accommodate where they messed up. I gotta hold it back off the frame now here, because now I gotta fur this out with wood. This another inch because of what they did. But uh, anyways. Show you here. Try to clamp this on. Take a piece of hat here. See how that's in the wall. So now I have to burn it out. Make it flush. Luckily. I'll have to grind that off. It'll be sticking out the wall, but luckily it's just barely in the wall right here, so they're lucky. Okay, we're getting ready to frame in a wet bar. We're just using a 4x4 four four treated piece of wood. We're going to bolt solid to the floor with some lag bolts. And we'll screw our, our framing for the wall on top of that to make it solid. Once you put the cabinets on and everything, it'll be really tight. And now I'm just pre-drilling holes for my uh, uh, lag bolts. Somebody's like to start the washer and nut on them first. In case you mess up the threads on the end, you can still get it down. Just barely start it though, so like that, and then pound it as far as you can down in there. as I can. I have to use a deep socket. Start at one end, work your way the other way so you can beat it to your chalk line. Right, just pre-drilling plumbing holes before I put my other stud so I can drop my pipe in there. Without having to fight it, our plumbing is coming up out of the floor here and then making it through here. So, 
basically what I'm doing is I'm going to run a piece of about 40 inch piece of pipe in here and then I can cut it off wherever I need to but at least it'll be in the wall just about right there and then I'll be able to cut it off uh, why I'm just running it Be able to just drop that in there without fighting anything. I put these other studs. Now, when I drill these holes, this is towards the drain. This one will get 13 and a quarter. This one's at 13 and five, six, uh, 13 and nine sixteenths. Uh, basically, you want your quarter per foot drop that's why it's a little crooked in there now i'll be able to put a stud in there on my layout it's just a little long but i'll be able to cut it wherever i need to Just gonna screw that down solid. Take the full bar countertop is 42. So far my framing's at 40. And then I'm going to have another uh, inch and a half top plate. So we got lots of trim and stuff. And then that'll give us uh, uh, 42 and a half with the finished floor. I mean 42 after the finished floor. Just kind of put two on the end here. First, I want to make sure we're pretty good. And then we'll stagger our screws. Two on the end. I'll just make sure this is flush on both sides. As I go, stagger about every 16 inches, just in between the studs. Now I screwed the studs down at the top. I screwed them at the bottom first. Can nail it. I just use screws because I don't want to bring a nail down. This will, I'm gonna put a piece out metal stud here and screw this to the metal stud so it'll hold it solid and then once you put the cabinet in it'll really be solid so just needed it up so I can put the power in the plumbing in putting some backing for a towel hanger backing for cur uh, mirror backing for our vanity that's how we just sliced it, slid it in there. The stud, what we do is you start at this end, screw, and two screws, screw, two screws, screw, and then the last one, of course, just put two screws into the side there. Put the pecs behind the studs, so you don't have to put plates on everything like over here. We have to put our plates on. So you don't hit the plumbing. Okay, this is for a radon. We just stuff some, we put our gravel back, stuffed some foam, sprayed some bug foam. And notice our, what I did with my thin set here, up against the back side of the tub. So, solid now. We put tile up against it. It's not going to move. They give you that black thing, but it's only halfway. We like that better. I know they expect the screws to hold, but it's more solid. But yeah, bug foam and styrofoam filled it up for right on. It's worth it to us to have the sheetrock delivered. 
they take it down into the basement for us and stack it. ceiling where the cans are getting ready to lay it out and cut it out so we can finish screwing it off and <laughs> <laughs> out the other one <laughs> Got the glasses and all. Glasses, gloves, gloves, you know gloves. someone will comment <laughs> much hardener as you put in is on the speed of how fast this stuff sets up. We're not no big hurry so I didn't put a whole lot so it's kind of a a pink color not a total dark pink color but uh, anyways I like using Bondo a lot for a lot of things not just cars and automotive but my woodwork too as well. Um, we pre-sanded this. We got to do, show that. Right the end. Just kind of smear some Bondo on there because it's going to glue this down. A lot of people use construction adhesive, which is fine, but I'm in a hurry. Bondo sets up in about a half an hour and it'll be totally ready to uh, do whatever else I need to do, which is start sheetrocking around the edges and put the wood on the bottom mainly we had to sand it with this first sand that edge good so the bondo sticks and we take and brush it all off but uh, anyways we got the piece of plywood cut I always put the bad side down and the nice side up this is mainly a nailer for our trim work Going in there, you can see the bondo squishing out now. And we just screw it down to the track out here. And it'll be ready for our trim. Trim in. We're going to just put a big piece of wood. And now I've got something to nail to. For my trim, you just got to be careful when you put your nails in that you hold off about three inches so you don't try to get nails in there and you start putting nails. And I just take a couple boxes of my whatever you got available that's nice and heavy. I just use some of my mud because I'm getting ready to take this thing out so I'm just using boxes of mud in each corner one in the middle make sure you have your window open for ventilation working with Bondo but uh, anyways you can see it's squishing out right there a little bit so we know we got it glued in using 3M corner bead 61 adhesive purple cam and this uh, tough corn beef we got from Lowe's. 
isn't the tape on, it's glued on. It's got the tape wrapped around the metal. First thing you want to do is just spray up the corn beef. This stuff sticks really good, so we spray our edge. Make sure you have good ventilation, get the window open. This stuff is super stinky. So have good ventilation. Don't have to get crazy with spraying a whole lot on there. It just sticks right on there. cut out size of our cans drill the hole uh, with my saw or something just big enough to put the broom handle screw it on there just screwed the broom handle on it use this to put in our can holes while we texture I will just hold that right there we'll spray around it keep mud from just spraying the can holes <laughs> 